Good morning, everybody. It's Dawn at Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana, and happy July. Today's July 1st. I got my Christmas socks on because it's Christmas in July. We've got Christmas music in the background. We're ready for Christmas in July, but before we get to that, we've got a new class going to start here pretty soon. It's a private Facebook group, so why are we here on YouTube? Well, it's because we're announcing it on YouTube so that uh, you guys all know that it's going to be a special thing, but it's with batiks, and it's called Emma. The quilt is called Emma. This is a picture of what the quilt looks like, and um, I've not experienced, I don't have a lot of experience with batiks, so I've asked my friend uh, Jennifer, I was going to call you Kathy. <laughs> How did that come well, about? She's friends with Kathy, too. I'm friends with Kathy, too, but you're not Kathy. You're no. Jennifer. Nope. Because she works a lot with batiks, and I thought maybe she could answer some questions for me. So she brought along some props. You want to get your props? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, let me uh, explain who I am. I'm Jennifer, obviously, not Kathy. Uh, here in the store, I am the um, online uh, fulfillment specialist, so if you order something online, I fill your order. Um, I'm also the personal shopper, so if you call the shop uh, because you need some more or something something you got before, I can help you with that. Or if you're looking for something something that you saw on the big wide internet, I can help you with that as well. Um, but the reason I'm here is because I'm also a pattern designer and I have my own uh, business called Inquiring Quilter. And in conjunction with that, I am an Island Boutique Ambassador and I have been an ambassador for six years. So What's I Island Boutique? Well, Island Batik is one of the many companies out there, like Moda, that you know that make batiks. Or um, the fabric, or in or the this company, case, yeah, that makes this fabric yeah, an is Anthology. And Anthology um, is a company that it's a sub company owned by Wyndham, but its its whole purpose is to uh, make batiks. And so, we're well, talking about making batiks. Can you tell us how, why it's different? Why are batiks so different than just regular fa quilting fabric? Okay. Um, batiks are handmade and using a process that was, uh, that originated in Indonesia. Uh, typically, um, they come from either the island of Bali or the island of Java. Um, and uh, they are made entirely by hand. Uh, but that does not mean that they, that causes some uh, special worry because they use modern techniques uh, to, they've modernized it as much as they can. So uh, they are uh, equivalent to quilting cottons in terms of use. You can use them for anything that you might use a quilting cotton for. Um, I have a friend who loves making garments with them. Oh yeah. She yeah. loves to wear And they are 100% cotton. I was going to um, ask you that. So they they're, are, they're, made, they're, they're exactly washable, exact uh, way, yeah. iron the same way. Yeah, I mean, um, they are a higher thread count than any other uh, cottons we have in the store. And the reason they're the highest thread count possible is because of the process used to create the batiks. Um, it's a little harsh. They have to uh, boil them and stuff. Well, tell us about that process. Well, uh, let's see. Batiks start out with a, a what they call a gray good, and it's not spelled like the color. It's spelled G R E I G E, like grayish, but it's gray good. So, and quilting cottons do too. And this gray good uh, is just a certain particular thread count, and uh, and it's white. And then it's uh, dyed or printed or whatever the particular fabric manufacturer wants to do. So with batiks, they are all hand dyed. And the way it starts out is they will hand dye them um, in a, a dye bath. And they may dye them multiple times to get several colors. Like this one has purple and blue, purple. And then this one has several different colors of blue and teal in it. And then the batiking part happens. This is just dyeing the fabric. So it's like the base of it. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they create um, you've got two different ways. They, they put wax on it. Oh, and really? So this is called a wax resist method. Okay. And where the wax is put on, it resists the next dye process. So they, they create a base color and then they uh, put the wax on. And there's two different ways you can put the wax on. You can draw it on with this thing. It looks like a pen. This, the tip of it, though, looks like uh, a teapot, a little tiny spout. Mm -hmm. And the imagine the, um, 
uh, wax just kind of pouring out as I draw something on. And these artisans just draw by hand, or uh, they create something called a chop, which again isn't spelled like C-H-O-P, it's spelled T-J-A-P, and uh, that's just a stamp, basically. Mm -hmm. So right. they, they can dip, they create the stamp out of copper, because copper will resist, um, will conduct heat and keep the wax uh, soft Valuable. and liquidy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they dip it in this um, uh, liang, which is what, uh, it's a low pan with a uh, fabric in it to kind of create a stamp pad. They stamp the, the, the chop mm -hmm. with the wax and then they uh, place it on the, the wax on the fabric. And the fabric, um, Here's examples of just a simple chop. Um, can here. you see that little leaf pattern in there? Yeah. I don't know if you can see. And then see. here's a bigger pattern. Yeah. So this was this was the chop, and then they stamped that on by hand. By hand. And yeah. so notice on this one that it's kind of lined up, and there's a certain spacing between the images. That's called registration, and that take that's like the hardest kind of wax. Uh, putting awning process that uh -huh. you can have. Um, and uh, and so it takes a experts, artisans, to be sure. able to, to stamp these. Um, here's a, another simple one. And so, in, like in this case, what they did is they started with a very um, dark purple, and then they uh, stamped the wax on, and then they dyed it with a light purple. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry, excuse That's me. The opposite. They, they, they started with a light purple, they stamped the wax on to leave this the light purple, and then they over dyed it with a dark color. Mm -hmm. And same here, they started with a very light teal, stamped it so that it would resist any further dyeing, and then they dyed it in a darker teal. Mm -hmm. So that's a simple kind of thing, but you can get complex. So basically, this is kind of two different techniques here. This is before the stamping. Yeah, like, so you can buy it unstamped or you can buy it with a pattern yeah, in it. Yeah, like, so this would be more or less like equivalent to a kind of a solid or a tone on tone. Is there ever a solid? Just yeah. a solid? Mm -hmm. um, here's a few solids. Island Boutique makes solids. I don't know if Anthology does, but mm -hmm. they probably do. And I'll tell you, what I like about, if you're a modern quilter and you like using solids, what I like about this is because the batiks are such a high thread count, mm -hmm. there's no see-through. Mm. You don't have those kinds of issues. You can't see the seams. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there might be a little see-through, but it's not like some mm -hmm. solids. They're really dense. I think that uh, this company does make that because we have a solid here in our group of Good. stuff yeah. for Emma, the black. Yeah. So, uh, so again, that's just like any other it's just like any other solid quilting cotton in terms of how you use it. Just higher thread count. And then with batiks, you can dye oh, nice. and over dye. You can do the waxing process multiple times and wow. dye it, run it through the dye bath multiple times to create all sorts of. Oh, look at that! Complex Isn't colors. Isn't that and just wonderful? Cappy would love this for her uh, paper piecing because she loves all these little things that mm -hmm. you can cut out and fussy cut now that is just really interesting now i've noticed when i was working on my uh organizing my fabrics here that every so often and i noticed it on a piece of fabric you had that there was a little gold oh. piece mm -hmm. of it looked yeah. like flecks of gold or uh coppery looking or whatever i don't see it now it must have fell off but what is that that it might just kind of picks off that might be a little bit of the, the wax still left but oh. what what they do is they wax they dye and then they remove the wax by sticking it in a boiling hot water bath mm -hmm. and um if there, there it's possible that maybe during the inspection process something was missed um but like in, but it doesn't hurt anything it just flakes right yeah, off oh yeah it'll just wash off um, yeah, I, it, it, that's very rare that you would find that kind of thing. It's mm -hmm. also very rare that you would find like the white still showing because typically they go through a so second many. process and they, and they hand stamp the color back in in order to fix anywhere where possibly something didn't get dyed. Uh -huh. um, so uh, these are high quality. They go through ma many uh, inspections. They, because they're dot, uh, they have to be boiled basically to get the wax off. They are more or less pre-washed. Um, 
Oh, they, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Sure, so, so they're pre-shrunk. They are. Wow. So, so you may ask, do I need to pre-wash? Well, not really. I mean, I'm not in the pre-wash camp anyway, but um, if you feel that you need to pre-wash a quilting cotton because it's like heavily saturated purple, reds, or blues, um, if you're feeling nervous about it and you pre-wash those particular fabrics, that's cool. Um, and do that with your batiks. But uh, when you buy stuff from a quilt store, as opposed to a big box store where it's a lower quality good, um, you really shouldn't have to worry about the, the, the dye transfer, but that might happen with highly saturated fabrics. So because I don't pre-wash, what I do is I just throw a couple color catchers in. Like this would be a highly saturated mm -hmm. fabric is yeah, what you're yeah. saying. I'm or saying that, that, that one. bright, uh -huh. full of dye, full of color. That is exceptionally um, saturated. I see. Um, and so in this instance, it would have started out very, very light. They would have taken the white fabric. They would have dyed it this very pale blue. Uh -huh. Then they would have taken this stamp process is what you're talking about yep. that is dipped in this wax and just dipped all over the fabric. Are they doing one yard at a time, five they're, yards at a time? They, they do it on a table. So they're doing what I've seen with the films that I've seen is they do a, the, the length of the table. Yeah. And you then can go on YouTube and watch them do it. It's oh yeah. fascinating. It is, it is entirely fascinating. It is fascinating. just so incredible mm -hmm. all the things that it goes oh, through it just is to get so to the cool. quilt shop. And then when they get done with the whole thing, they will uh, dry it and fold it and wrap it by hand on the bolts and put it in a little plastic sleeve, stick it in cardboard boxes and ship it to the manufacturer who then ships it to like us. Yeah. And so wow. it is, there's, uh, some people think that there's a risk involved in taking these because they're hand dyed. No, it is a modern process where they make sure the color is set the color is saturated um and just like and anything beautiful. else and like evolved. anything else oh yeah yeah it's yeah. evolved and modernized yeah. and they've they have better dyes today than they oh. did when they originally first started yeah. i mean better wax probably mm -hmm. you know a, a speedier way or maybe even a better way of making the stamps mm -hmm. you know so everything gets you know industrialized is what I think yeah. maybe the word Yeah, I mean, be. as much as you can, but right. this is entirely But this processed. still is such an Hand. ancient art, it isn't is. it? Mm -hmm. It really is. They think it might ha be prehistoric. Really? They actually think that maybe one of the, in that area anyway, one of the first ways man would, um, you know, die, be an artist. Yeah. And, I'm and fascinated with the ink pen that had the well in it and that they poured the the yeah, wax oh. in. And when you see and that, that is did just hand work. Oh, that is. Yeah. I would love to see that. I'm going to look a video up on that. And the I chops. See that. The chops are made by hand. Yeah, too. I've seen the they're, chops They're thin too. strips of copper that they're the artisan awesome. will bend and twist and whatever to create the design. How that happens blows my mind. Yeah. 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 Well, that's exciting. Hey, now, okay, now we've got, we know how the fabric's being made and we know where the fabric comes from and how it's dyed. Do you do anything different when you're preparing it to quilt with? Do you, uh, like for instance, I was noticing that the uh, salvage edge mm -hmm. is not the same as on a cotton because this is the salvage, well, let me find a salvage edge here. Okay, here's the salvage edge. So the fabric goes, I mean, the color goes all the way out to the yeah. edge, yeah. but there's still a a little woven piece in there. How do you treat, how do you use that? Um, I, with Island Batiks anyway, which is where I have the most experience, I play it by ear. Um, if right now when I'm feeling this, it's feeling, it's feeling just as soft as all the fabric everywhere else. So I would use it all the way to the end. Um, but sometimes you can feel that salvage. Mm -hmm. So I just chop it off just like I would any other quilt and cotton. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, when you can use it all the way to the end, you're getting like 44 inches yeah. <laughs> as opposed to like 42 yeah. of a quilt and cotton. So sometimes you may need less strips than a pattern would call for if you're doing not this one, but if you're doing like something that wasn't designed specifically for batiks, um, mm -hmm. you might use, uh, you know, one less strip. I don't know. I'm a frugal girl. Because it's more dense fabric, is it harder on the rotary blade? Do you feel like you have to uh, yeah. change your rotary blade out? It, it can more be. Often? Yeah, for sure. 
Um, so always, you know, listen to your rotary blade when it's not cutting properly, when it's kind of being forced, uh, make sure you change it because it's not safe mm -hmm. to use an unsharp blade. Mm -hmm. um, also, you have to change your needle a little bit more. Right. And um, to that end. I was going to say that. I was going to ask oh, you I'm that. Sorry. Ask me about needles. And, and straight pins. You know, when you're working mm -hmm. with straight oh my pins, oh. they have to be extremely sharp, yeah. correct? And they, yes. And they, because the fabric is really dense. I mean, yeah. it's it's almost between fabric and paper kind of feel. Don't you it, think? It, it can be. Mm -hmm. um, I know, but this, I think, feels, it feels a little stiff. It is but very it's, soft. It's soft. I'm not saying not um, soft. I'm just saying the the con the structure mm -hmm. yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. What you're feeling is that high a thread, thread count. count, right? And um, so yeah, it is a little bit sti stiffer, but mm -hmm. um, you know they will uh, they'll they'll quilt up just the same as anything oh, yeah, else. Look at this. And they'll be just Has as this soft. Been washed? Yeah. But uh, it's just as soft and as comfortable as, you know, to me. But it, 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 there is it a little bit of a difference. There is a little bit of a difference. It doesn't feel. crinkle as much like, you know, when you have a cotton uh, quilt because, it's like you said, it's been pre-shrunk. Yeah. And I hadn't thought of that in my mind. Mm -hmm. I hadn't thought of, well, yeah, they got to boil that that wax out of there. So yeah, it's gonna be pre, pre shrunk. Interesting. Look at this stamp. That is so cool. This mm -hmm. little Yeah, this, this one was. Um, uh, can we open this oh, up sure. and look? Now, is this one of your designs or yeah. is it? Awesome. Let's check It's called this Mariner. Uh, that was also the name of the collection. And Can uh, you stand over that way a little bit? So and can then quilt. step back. Oh, we need to step back. Okay, there we go. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot of sea themes stamped into the cloth because this was, it was, you know, called Mariner. So they wanted to make it look oceany. Oh, awesome. And then this is a storm at sea block. Well, very nice, Jennifer. Thank you. So, and you used batiks on the back, so there's not a problem with that. Yeah. If you, you know? if you choose to use something else or if you choose to make a quilt that combines uh, regular quilting cottons plus batiks, you know, in the top or whatever. Just, I would probably, um, not probably, I would, uh, pre-wash. Pre-wash your because, regular fabric. Yeah, because keep in mind that the uh, the um, batiks have already been have shrunk. Been shrunk. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're going to combine it with something else. I think that sounds like a yeah. good idea. And if you don't, it'll just, your after you eventually wash the quilt, it'll be more crinkly. Mm -hmm. But it, that's fine, too, if you like that. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about the camp that likes to starch fabrics? Um, if you wash, then if you pre-wash, then I would starch them just to get them stiff again. But um, if you don't pre-wash, as I typically don't, um, these are nice and stiff and really great and easy to cut. Mm -hmm. They I don't think. seem like they wrinkle as much as a as a regular cotton. Well, they, they they when they wrinkle, they kind of it, it wrinkles. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so it's like it sets the the seam. Mm. So when you press it, it'll stay pressed, mm. which is nice. Nice. But it it could it can wrinkle. But these you know yeah. I guess haven't been. Yeah. Because I yeah. store them okay. Well, I mean I I had to press the wrinkles out of these. Yeah. I know they wrinkle. Yeah. I just meant, you know, it doesn't seem as wrinkly. I don't know what yeah. what I'm trying to say, but yeah, I just think it's a beautiful hand. They feel so lovely. Uh, and I just wanted to ask you uh, about all this because I think it would be good for the viewers to know. Some people just stay away from batiks because they think it's some kind yeah. of wacky yeah. wack a doodle nope. thing that's not, not even cotton but it's completely 100 percent right. cotton right yeah and when you deal with a, a company that that makes batiks and knows batiks like island batik or anthology mm -hmm. you're gonna get a very good quality product there is nothing to be afraid of uh-huh um uh, because of the high density of of batiks they are perfect for applique okay so if you're into applique man that's, that's yeah because great. Look at how much we've I mean, handled this, and there's no fraying. Yeah, they don't, they don't fray too much. They really don't. Yeah, they do so a little I do bit, a but not lot of, a lot because of the yeah. high thread count again, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So you don't so. have to necessarily, you can do raw edge yeah. and, and don't necessarily turn under the edge, and you'll yeah. still get a good quality result. Wow, how, that sounds like yeah. fun. Uh, much more fun than all that needle turning and all that. So I have a quick question. If mm -hmm. somebody has a traditional quilt that they're finishing and they're looking for maybe a backing fabric or binding fabric, um, is batik an option to combine with their other quilt? 
Yes, again, if you're gonna combine an all cotton, a uh, quilting cotton type top with something on the back that's batik, I would, um, well, you could surge around the edge yeah, and of, the, of the pre-made quilt, the pieced quilt, and wash it. Yeah. But I wouldn't wash it in the wash machine. I would wash it by hand. That's what I was thinking. And, and get you some hot water and get it shrunk and then yeah. put it on. Put or, the, or just go yeah. go for it, put it together, and then wash it and see how you like the result. It, it will be... Uh, the, the crinkles will be a little bit more obvious, but uh, nothing that's bad. Right. Nothing right. at all that's bad. And some people really like that crinkly look. Yeah. My friend Tammy, she just loves that old-fashioned crinkly look. Yeah. So. And using batik as a backing means mm -hmm. that it's going to wear well, at least the backing yeah, part. Yeah, exactly. The back. And binding, too. I know. One, I of our, of one of our instructors, Kathy Zook, when she teaches her classes, her thing is that uh, every quilt she makes has to have a piece of batik in it somewhere. Oh, yeah. how fun. <laughs> yeah. So she That's likes to clever. mix. Yeah, she loves to mix batiks oh, with regular yeah. quilting and I, cotton. And I have two, and it's fine. Good. Good. It's fine. Good. Well, we appreciate you coming and sharing with us, sharing your knowledge with us. I do want to uh, invite everybody, if you haven't uh, seen the uh, Emma quilt, these are the fabrics that we're going to use. And again, I'll show you the picture of the quilt. Forget what size it is. Maybe it tells me in my book here. Yes, 86 by 86. And um, the program is going to run from, we're going to start today, but you know, uh, you can always start anytime. Our Facebook, we're going to do a private Facebook group. And when you buy the kit, you get an invitation to uh, join the private Facebook group and we'll be doing two videos a month. And what, how does that help them? Why would they want to join the group? Well, one thing is, is that we give lots of good instruction yes, you do. <laughs> on how to cut out more efficient, uh, more efficient, uh, maybe more frugal with your fabric. So you're getting more for your dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, have a, uh, kind of some easy ways of easier ways of doing things. So we like to share those. But I think the most benefit is being in the Facebook group and sewing it along with other people and uh, communicating with those people yeah. and sharing what you've done. How yeah. fun is that? that it you is. Can, yeah, that you can say, oh, look, I'm already done. It can kind of be like a contest or race. Yeah. Who can get theirs done first or it's whatever? Like a private it, it's private quilting It is. It is. You it's get to know like each going, other. And... Going into the quilt shop and having a class without, I mean, you could do it in your pajamas at home alone. Yeah. But you are not really alone. So it's kind of fun that way. You can sew along with the video because one week we're going to have a, an all cutting video of cutting out the blocks. And then the following week we're going to do actually the sewing, sewing of the blocks. So it's really going to be a hands on thing. And if you're a beginner or a new sewer, this will be the perfect opportunity to kind of learn some ins and outs of how to, you know, straighten an edge of your fabric. Yeah. And I mean, we're gonna get some really yeah. good hints yeah. on how to do things like that. You're real like good at hand-holding and well, helping people learn. Uh, that's yeah. my thing I love to do, is I love to teach people how to do things, so. But even if they know everything. It, yeah, we can always slip in a hint here or there. And you know, that's another good thing about the Facebook group. If you do it a different way, you could share it, and then we can all learn from that, and we can try new ideas from everybody else. So I love that, but we're gonna have, uh, we have already sold out of the kits that we made, but we still have fabric, correct? So yep. we can still make kits. Yep, it just might, you know, if you place an order, it might take a day before you, we, we can ship it to you or you can pick it up. But uh, yes, we're happy and to. And in my folder, it tells us. To make you kits. Yeah, it tells us how much I think the kit is. Let me get that out. Let's see. It's two hundred. Uh, it's so about two ninety nine, twenty nine ninety nine plus two seventy because we did it as a sign up thing way back last year uh, when we first uh, found out about the uh, program, and so it's two hundred and seventy dollars plus twenty nine ninety nine, and that'll give you everything that you need to make this quilt. The instructions and 
You even are going to get a bonus table runner, which are you I kidding thought, me? I wow. thought would be a beautiful bolster pillow oh, yeah. for your bed to go with the or, quilt. Or a bed runner. Or yeah. a dresser scarf. Yeah, a dresser scarf. Anything, you know, oh. to go along with it. So mm -hmm. I thought this would be fun. And this is going to be foundation piece. So we're going to learn how to do some foundation piecing, oh, which is wow. going to be, I know, going to be exciting too. So um, You'll yeah. love doing foundation. If you hate foundation piecing or are afraid with batiks, it's easy. It's, because yeah. both sides are the same. Uh, that's the other thing that we didn't even talk no, about. No, we forgot. Oops. <laughs> that's, that's okay. True. Yeah. Look. Both sides are the same. Here, like this. Yeah. They're both the same. So front and back, you don't have to remember. You don't, yeah, you don't have you to don't remember, have to remember all remember. that. Oh my gosh, is that the front or the back? Mm -hmm. They're both exactly so the same. So with foundation piecing, you yeah, you don't have to. You like get that part all mixed up. It's yeah, fine. that's awesome. That's a good. I forgot yeah, about that, that was a good tip. <laughs> okay. So if you'd like to join us in doing Emma, like I said, we're going to start today on the private Facebook group, but you can get caught up. Mm -hmm. Just give oh, yeah. Jennifer a call here at the shop. What's the phone number, Jennifer? Uh, uh, Peter will put it in the drop down box. It's, 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 we don't. Yeah. We, we're the we're the ones who we're the ones that never miss work, so we don't yeah, call we in. We never call ourselves. So anyway, no, we Peter, never call in. Peter will Peter will put oh it in the drop down box, and Jennifer will take your call, and she'll get you all signed up. Oh, here, Lisa's got a little oh, cue card. Three one seven seven seven, seven, seven six. six. Four two two seven. Oh Thank you, God. Lisa. I like that. <laughs> <it. I just, laughs> see what a community can do for you. So join us on the Facebook. Page. But they only get they only get you they, and they only get our community if they buy this kit from us. The kit from Always in Stitches in Noblesville, Indiana. But you know, buy a kit, get a class. Get a, a free get two classes because you're making a quilt and a get a free pattern, get a free class. I mean, wow. a twelve free classes, no, twenty four free classes because it's two a month. Yeah. So and a ton of best friends. Yeah, yeah. With so us. come quilt along with us, okay? See what we can do together, and uh, we'll look forward to it. Yeah. Have a nice day. Have a nice Fourth of July too. Bye. Bye. Eat lots of cherry pie. <laughs>